Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. A bit of a slightly odd one this one. It's the next episode in sorting out the Harley's primary side problems, of which there are many. Uh, it's going to be a slightly disjointed video this one because as I speak now, it is the, oh, I don't know, towards the end of August. And the bits haven't all come because the, some of the stuff that supplied was wrong and had to go back. Uh, and some of the stuff hasn't turned up and is having to be replaced by the people that sold it to me. All of whom, by the way, have been excellent, I must stress that. Uh, both sellers, uh, who are well-known names in the Harley Davidson world, have both been excellent in their customer service, so I'm very grateful for them. Thank you. Uh, but it means I'm not going to be able to do this before I go. Uh, you, you may have seen a previous video about me explaining what's happening there. So this first part is going to be August, and the second half of the video is going to be when I get back, which is going to be towards the end of October. So if it all looks a bit peculiar, uh, sorry, I'll try and stitch it together to minimise the uh, the obvious uh, climatic changes, shall we say? Anyway, let's go on with it. I found more problems, so we'll start with that because it's on the bench, and then we'll move back down to the bike itself. Right guys, this is what I want to show you before we start off on the actual oil seal removal. The inner primary has a bearing where the shaft comes through and it's really, really notchy. I mean properly notchy. So that's going to have to come out and another one put in. So we might as well look at that now I suppose. Uh, the case has been modified to be used wet various bits have been plugged. So, on the back, let's see if you can still see that. Yeah, I think you can. On the back there is a, an oil seal, which is one of the ones I wasn't sure what it was in the kit, now I know. So that's got to come out, the bearing's got to come out, so we'll try getting this out first. Mm. That's tight. Right. Let me just find something. Find something to protect the case. That's probably too high. There we go. Right. There's our bearing. Which is a horrible old sludge. Uh, it's double sealed. Looking at the writing, made in China, so that's obviously been replaced. So now we've got to knock it out, which worries me slightly because uh, for such a big case, this is quite light, really. Quite. Mm. I don't like. It. Yeah, I don't like the thought of just twatting it. That's for sure. At least unsupported. I'm going to have to twat it. That's all I've got. But I'm going to, have to find some way of supporting behind the bearing. Ah, I suppose something like that would do, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's about the best I can get. So that'll at least get it started. Is that higher than that? Right. So let's get that turned over. Like that. Yeah. Right, so that'll support the bearing. Dropping our little plate. At least until it gets moving. Okay, I'm going to put a bit of, uh, bit of localised heat around the bearing edge. Not a sausage. Right. It's not much of an outer race to play with, sadly. 
That's probably not bad. Let's give that a tap. Mm. Bit more heat. A lot easier with the press. Yes, we're going. Now, at some point that will contact the wood, but we're not there yet. Right, now it's how do I support it? I wonder if it'll just go. It's 90% out. Just give it a gentle tap, see what happens. It is out. Right, now we need cleaning up. And then our new bearing fitted when it arrives. Yeah, that's okay. Good. As I say, I wish I had a press. I think it's probably time that the uh, the garage had one, don't you? I think that will be our next investment. Good. Right, turn that over, get it cleaned out, and then we'll wait the arrival of the new bearing. Right, I was advised the best way to get this out is with a slide hammer. Unfortunately, I haven't got a sli uh, slide hammer. So I'm going to try drilling uh, a hole here, probably one here, and then using the oil seal tool that you just saw being used on the outer case and hope for the best because my last slide hammer died 20 years ago. I never replaced it because I never had a job I needed to use it on. So we'll just have to see what happens. This is not going well, is it? Come on. I don't know if you were to see that, but it's definitely Definitely pulling out the top. I just want to make sure that there's no possibility of anything touching the case. There we go. Should really have done a second hole, but once it started moving, yeah, once it started moving, I thought I'd move there. Gently get underneath it there. Right, there we are. Made by Victor. And then it should be 
Our cork seal, yeah, there it is. Broken. And then a spacer. There's the spacer. Behind which there's loads of little roller bearings. Right. It's out, that's the main thing. I'll clean that in a second. Let's look at the spacer. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's a shiny section across the middle there uh, where the seal was running, which uh, isn't really that uncommon, I don't think. I mean, normally where seals sit, you'll get marking on cranks and things. But I was warned before we started, I don't know if you can see the shiny band. I'll, I'll get the macro lens on it in a minute so you can see. I was warned that if you could see the shiny band, it was uh, it would leak. Now I can't really feel much as far as wear goes, but I have bought a new one because, uh, as I say, I know nothing about Harley Davidson, so I will take any and all advice that people send me with gratitude. So yeah, I suppose when you look, it is uh, obviously it's worn. Is that the same height? Yes, it is. That's a little notch where that keeper was broken. So, so I've got a new one, which I will fit. But you wouldn't, I wouldn't, you may, but I wouldn't have imagined that that tiny amount of marking would cause a problem. Let me just put it on macro and you can see what I'm wittering on about. Yeah, there's where the seal sat. That shiny section there. Hopefully that will be clearer. Right guys, I'm back from my uh, two month jaunt in the sunshine. Back into the wet and windy conditions that I normally have to endure. And back on the shovel head. Now, since I left, there have been a couple of problems, a couple of issues. Uh, one, Michael from uh, Ireland very kindly commented and put me right on the clutch push rod, which uh, I naturally assumed would just come out like it does on all the British bikes and things and some of the jab stuff. Uh, but it shouldn't. It should be attached to an oil flinger uh, on the other side of the gearbox. So obviously there's a problem there. So we're going to take the other side of the gearbox off as well. And then the other problem, which I wasn't able to sort out before I went, I will show you now. So let's look back down. Right, now before I went, I think I mentioned that the, uh, the rotor was stuck and I was going to borrow a, a puller, which I managed to do just before I left. Unfortunately, the way it's been drilled, uh, the holes are too closely grouped together for the puller to work. And I don't have another one, nor does my friend who I borrowed that off. He hasn't got another one that's going to do that. Now, the bolts I bought ready to use with the puller, and coincidentally, they came from my local engineering supplies, who told me that they will no longer be stocking any AF stuff, any Imperial stuff, UNC, any of it, um, because it just isn't the demand anymore. So they will order stuff in, but only by the box, which is rather excessive. But anyway, I think now, as you're here, I'll just try grabbing those bolts and wiggling up and down to see if I can free it off those uh, splines and just see if we can get any movement on this thing. Um, because this is how I left it and it's driving me nuts. So I'll have a quick go at that. And then to be honest, a couple of the other items I ordered haven't turned up, which appears to be a problem at the minute. Two suppliers have said that they're having real problems with stuff disappearing. But anyway, I'm behind schedule. Things are not going well. So this little job could stretch out rather more than I was expecting. Anyway, we'll plod on. So we'll give a, a quick go at getting this off, and then that'll probably be it for this video. 
uh, while I wait for some other stuff to turn up. Right, I'm going to get in your way slightly here because it's difficult to uh, light this, get the camera in and me. So we'll give it a go. Mm. There's no sign of that moving at all. Let me just get a rubber hammer and give it things a little tap. Mm. Right, I'm going to have to go across you here and get that little hole. No sign of it wanting to come off. Oh, dear me. Nope. I'm going to have to get a puller, so I think I'm going to have to make one. Ah oh dear. Nope. I've given up. I did think for one second that maybe somebody had uh, drilled and tapped these holes using the clutch pullers, the circular clutch puller plate, but they haven't, so that doesn't line up either. It's also too wide. Uh, right, so. Not a good start. I've got to get that off because the seal behind there is also leaking. I've got to get the uh, stator swapped. So it's got to come off. So that's it for now. I'm going to have to try and find some way of getting to do this. And at the minute, I'm struggling. This isn't standard, by the way. At least it doesn't appear to be. The, the ones I've seen, uh, just a, a couple of holes in here, drilled in here, that you could put hooks in and pull it out. So somebody's drilled and tapped this, I would imagine. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. So the next episode will be when I manage to get this sorted out. So thanks for watching. Call back. There's obviously going to be an awful lot more work on this old heap. Bye for now.